sense. So an IC circuits using the power triangle method. So we've got a circuit here where we've got two terminals, one and two, voltage marked, unknown voltage between those two. That's one of the things we're going to calculate, the voltage at terminals one and two. We've been given the voltage at terminals three and four, 60 volts, that is across a parallel combination of a resistor and a capacitor. And then in line, we've got an inductor. And I haven't given you values of inductance and capacitance. I've given you values of XL and XC, because I've given you a mean ohms. So I've made it easier in that respect, because you haven't got to calculate. You don't need the frequency of the supply, because you've been given those. Because you all know that those values are frequency um, dependent. So you're going to ask for, to calculate the current in each circuit element. The voltage between terminals 1 and 2. That's the incoming here. And you're being asked to calculate the impedance seen by those two terminals 1 and 2. So the, the total impedance of that circuit. And there are a number of ways you could tackle that. But we're going to, going to use the power triangle, power um, theory to, to solve this problem. Okay, so one, what's the first thing that you can see just from looking at that problem? What what do you think you could calculate? Anything you can get direct? Power, power, and it would be, uh, Yes, yeah, sort of. How can you get the Qs here, though? How can you get Q? Bear in mind the information that you've got, which is this and these two, and you've got that value up there. That The value of XL ain't a lot of use to you at the moment. What can we, what could we calculate though? We can get the, um, the current bridge. Bridge. Yep, or you, so you could get, what you could say is IL, you can get I, I, sorry, IR, can't we? Because you've been given, got the magic pen on still, right, you've, you've got, you can get IL because you've been given, by Ohm's law, you've got E13 and you can divide that by the resistance, sorry, IR, that is, so you've got your 60 volts and you divide that by the 12 ohms. That will give you your um, current of 5 amps. So that's the resistor current. Yeah? Anything else you can calculate? Change that to... Oh. And I, uh, the boys who have been with me a while know I like that. Formula, then put the numbers in, then give the answer. If you've gone wrong, I can see where you've gone wrong. Yeah? IL. I, can we get IL, Danny? We don't know the voltage across it, so at the moment we can't, can we? Yeah? We could get IC though, could we not? Because I'm going to change this again. That's ZR, which is effectively, is it not? The, that's the impedance of the resistor, which is equal to the resistance, because that's a per resistor. Yeah? 
IC can come from E13 divided by the impedance of the capacitor ZC. So effectively, that could be the impedance of a per capacitor is what value? The magnitude of the impedance. XC. Yeah? We haven't got the angle. We know what the angle is. That's 90 degrees for a per capacitor. But we aren't worried about that at the moment. All we're worried about here is the magnitudes of them. So we can write that as the 60 volts divided by uh, the 5 ohms. That comes to 12 amps. So we've got the current in the first two circuit elements. What can we calculate using those two currents now? Remember, and at the moment, we're just focusing purely on, if we think about it, we're focusing at the moment purely on that parallel part of the circuit. We're ignoring that inductor for the minute. We can't do anything with that because we don't know enough. But we now know this current here, IR, and we know IC, and we know that voltage. What can we calculate from currents and voltages? Well-known commodity that we've been talking about, yeah, uh, using Ohm's law. Well, what was that? Power. So we... Ohm's law is one, power is the other. They involve the, they are, that's a, that triangle of four quantities, isn't there? That, we're, that all interact with each other. But we've got this formula. The power so active power let's go P can come from E13, the voltage applied, multiplied by the current through the resistor. We've only got to get power, remember, from per resistance. So that's 60 volts times the resistor current, 5 amps, equals... 300 watts. Yeah? We can also say reactive power Q and um, but remember be careful here we're only talking about this parallel part at the moment just the capacitor and the resistor we're, we're isolating them so QC, I'm going to call that PR and QC, is equal to E13 times IC. That's 60 times 12 equals 720 VAR. Okay? Everyone happy with that? Now we know P and Q for that isolated parallel part. What can we calculate, Luke? Well, we can calculate the, the complete complex or apparent power for that section, S. I'm going to call it SCR. That's just the S for the capacitor parallel part of the circuit. We've got a triangle situation here now, haven't we? We've got a power, 300 watts, and we've got a Q of 720 VAR. Don't draw my diagrams to an SCR 
as a long hypotenuse there. So it's simply another Pythagoras problem. SCR is equal to square root of PR squared plus QC squared. That's the root of 300 squared plus 720 squared comes to 780 VA. Yeah. Okay. What we'll do now, go back to looking at the diagram. my red pen. We know these two currents. We still don't know that one. But what can we say about the relationship between IC, IR and IL? I got the same direction. What common law you know relates those three currents? Kirchhoff's current law. What would that say about those three currents, Matt? <laughs> this is, you, could, you could argue that in terms of this circuit looking in from here, IL is the total current, isn't it? Or all the current that flows from whatever the source is over here is going to go through that inductor. But then it's going to split, and some of it's going to go capacitor, some of it's going to go resistor. So, we can say IL is equal to IC plus IR by Kirchhoff's law. Yeah? And I'll put that statement down the bottom in a minute. In fact, I'll put it down there now. So, looking at the diagram, we've decided that. So, by... Kirchhoff's current law, KCL, IL is equal to IR plus IC. Looking at the results we've already got, how else could we calculate the total current that is IL and I, uh, IC and IR? Bearing in mind that those two components are the parallel combination. One of them is a resistor, one of them is a capacitor. But we've calculated their individual powers. One's active, one's reactive. Where could we get this total current for those two components from? Using which value? Not that's not Ohm's law, no. What you have to remember, Matt, is these two currents are completely out of phase with each other. Got to be careful here, because one of them has an in phase component, IR. The other one has an out of phase component, IC. The total. There's a combination of those two. Now we could do some complex maths around just the currents, but remember what we're doing here, we're trying to use the power triangle to solve it. So what value in that triangle can we use to get the current out of? Not quite. We could get the resistor current out of the watts, but we Use the you, we use the current to find the watts, so we'd just be going back to where we started, yeah? We can get the, the capacitor power, or reactive power, came from the capacitor current. Where can the total current come from, do you think? From S, yeah? The apparent power. So we can say also, S is equal to...
I L plus I C times that voltage. Yeah. What I'm trying to say here, I think that's, that's probably not a good way to, to put it, actually. I'm going to change that. Um, we know that S is equal to E13 times the total current. And then we know the total current is what's flowing in through the inductor, because that's them two added together. Yeah? So that's a better way to put it. Therefore, we can get that IL and the total current flowing from cyanus SCR over E13. That is 780 over 60. That comes out at 13 amps. So we've now solved the first part of that problem current in each of the circuit elements because we've got the inductor current capacitor current, resistor current using Ohm's law and power. Yep. Yeah, I mean, effectively, we, that's a little check. What, what, are, what were these currents? IC was 12 amps, wasn't it? So what you've got here is another little triangle of 12. IR was 5. This should be IL. So that should be the root of 5 squared plus 12 squared. Just check that and see if that come out. I hope so, I've got my fingers crossed. Sound about right. 13? Yeah, that's what we got, 13 amps. Yeah, alright. So you could have got it from the currents as well. But our focus at the moment is on power. Alright? Start a new page for the purpose of the board. What we can find now, because we know, here's our inductor, what was that? 5 ohms? And we now know the current going through it is 13 amps. So I've just drawn out that part of the circuit on its own now. Yep. Can we not calculate VL? The voltage across the inductor? Yeah. On the diagram, I think that's E, the voltage, uh, EMF between terminals 2 and 3, I think that's how it's labelled. Alright. We can go VL is equal to E23. We just use Ohm's law. But we use IL. We use the impedance of the inductor ZL. Impedance of that inductor is XL, isn't it? Yep. So that's 13 times 5 104 volts. That will allow us to find QL, because that's equal to E23, the voltage associated with the inductor, times IL, that's 104 volts, times 13, equals 
1352 Ra. So, we've got a power triangle here now. It's got P. Remind me what it was. 300 watts. We've got QL. One three five two var. We've got QC. Remember they're opposite of each other. When one's drawing power, the other one's giving it back, and vice versa. So there are 180 degrees opposing of each other always. This is 720 var. That gives us an overall Q. That is QL minus QC, does it not? Yep, because one of them is positive, the other one's negative. So we've got an overall situation, power wise, where S is in there. This is where it gets really useful drawing a diagram. Because QT, the total Q, there's always all the inductor ones added together. Take away all the capacitor ones added together. Because they work opposites to each other. So formally, we can say QT is QL minus QC. That is 1352 minus 720 equals 632 var. From, from earlier, P was 300 watts. Calculated that earlier. So, ST is equal to P squared plus QT squared square rooted. That is the root of 300 squared plus 7632. And I made that. 700 VA. So this whole circuit now, the whole thing has got an S of 700 VA. Yep. So we know that current. We know the total S. What can we find from those two values? The E123, yep. The E12, sorry, this voltage. Because that, that whole circuit is connected to that voltage. So we can find the total apparent power associated. We got the total apparent power associated with this voltage. Therefore, we can now find E12. This is the answer to part B, really. E12 is equal to ST 
over the line current. Seven hundred over thirteen. Fifty three point eight volts. Yep. And lastly, C, the impedance Z at, at 1, 2, the impedance seen at 1, 2, has got to be, by Ohm's law, the voltage at 1, 2, divided by the line current being drawn from it. That's 53.8 volts divided by the 13 amps is 4.14 ohms. There are other complex ways to find that impedance. But we've done it using the power triangle. And there's always, nearly always more than one way to solve a problem. It all depends on what values have been given or what values you can measure. And Question three on the back of the tutorial sheet is another problem very similar to that one that you can have a go at. The worked answers to the first two weeks I believe are now up on the site. If not, I'll put them up tomorrow when I put these ones up. All right. I might run out of time to do worked answers eventually, but I'm trying very hard to keep up with them at the moment. All right. So that's the second type of problem that we're looking at this week. Third type of problem is one like this, power and complex notation. So we've got a simple-ish series circuit with 45 ohms resistance in series with a 28 ohm inductive reactance. It's connected to an AC supply 159 volts at an angle of 65 degrees. Find the magnitude and phase of current I. The magnitude and phase of the voltage across the resistor and reactants. The active and reactive power associated with the resistor, reactants and the source. Yeah. So we're tight on time, we should, but we should just be able to go through the method of solving this problem. All right? But again, that'd be pretty much going, th going through the method. So, where can we start with this? If I labelled this up as VR and VL, what law could you give me that would provide some kind of relationship there? And let's call this just D. Forget these A's and B's. Oh, Kirchhoff's Rolly's law. What would that tell me about them, Danny? Yep. By Kirchhoff's voltage law, E is equal to VR plus VL. Yep. Over here, we could also say, could we not, by Ohm's law, Sorry, we, by Ohm's law, we could write this. E is 159 angle, 65 degrees. All right. E, sorry, E, by Ohm's law, is equal to I the total current times 
the total impedance of that circuit, yeah? And total impedance of that circuit is the impedance of the resistor added to the impedance of the inductor. So what we can write here is that's equal to I times um, VR plus I times VL. Yeah? I times VR Getting late in the day. I times R plus I times XL. Agree with that? That gives me VR. That gives me VL. All right. So we can put 159 angle 65. That's E is equal to I. We can put brackets around the R and the XL terms. Happy with that. And we know that R is equal to 45. XL is equal to 28 watt. What do I have to add to XL to make it absolutely correct in every way? Remember, it's a complex quantity. Full complex quantity of that. Twenty-eight J. The J tells me that's twenty-eight vertically upwards on the rectangular Cartesian system. Yep. So we've got to do that. All right, so 159 angle 65 degrees is actually equal to I times 45 plus 28J. Rearranging this because we want to know I. So that must be 159 angle 65 degrees divided by 45 plus 28J. We've got two complex numbers in different formats there. Convert this one. The easiest way around this problem is to convert that one to polar form. 159 angle 65 degrees divided by the conversion is 53 angle 31.89 I made it yeah. yeah and the answer to that is 3 amps at angle 33.11 degrees when the question says, like this one does, find the magnitude and phase angle, you're going to need to have it in polar form. So there was no point, there would be no point in converting that 159 angle 65 degrees to rectangular, because you'd have then had to convert it back at the end. You'd have had two, two um, format conversions, and therefore two lots of error induced through rounding. Yep. And, I, and anyway, division is easier with polar numbers than it is with rectangular ones. All right. Does that come back, Tom, the complex numbers? Sorry. Yeah. This is divide the, divide the magnitudes, yeah. subtract the angles. Yeah. If you multiply and you multiply the magnitudes and add the angles. If you look back at last week's video, we went through all of that anyway. All right? So that's 
the magnitude and phase angle of the current. B, now we know the current through both components as a series circuit, so I is consistent for both of them. We can find VR because it is I times R. That is three angle thirty three point one one times forty five and a resistor's got no angle. That comes out at a hundred and thirty five volts angle. 33.11 degrees. You note that a resistor does not change the angle of the current. So the voltage and the current associated with a resistor are in phase with each other. They've got the same angle. VL. Consequently, must be I times XL. Namely, three angle thirty three point one one times twenty eight angle watt for an inductor, Matt. Yeah, positive ninety degrees. Well done. The answer to that comes out at eighty four volts angle. 123.11 degrees. Yep. Now, The last part, to get complex power, to get, sorry, active, reactive, and complex power. Complex power is your S, by the way, it's, it includes both terms. Um, you need to use the complex conjugate I bar of I. And all that is as it's got the same magnitude sign of angle changed i.e. for this circuit i bar is equal to 3 amps angle minus 33.11 degrees. Just like in the, when you need to use a complex conjugate for rectangular number division, so you just change the sign of the J term in the denominator. So, complex power for resistor SR is equal to I bar times R E VR that is three angle minus thirty three point one one times 
times the 135 volts angle positive 33.11 degrees. This is why you have to use a complex conduit. That's the only way that the angle will cancel out for the resistor and give us no angle for power and that's the only way you'll get real power. That comes out at 405 angle 0 VA which is equal to 405 watts because there's no angle associated with it, it must be watts. For inductor, SL is I bar times VL. That is three angle minus thirty three point one one degrees times hundred and sorry eighty four angle one hundred and twenty three point one one degrees the answer to that come out to 252 VA angle 90 degrees or it's 252 VAR because the angle is exactly at that um, 90 degrees yep And lastly, the complex power associated with the source, I bar times E12, or E, sorry, we called it, don't we? The supply voltage, that is. 3 angle minus 33.11 degrees times uh, 159 angle 65 degrees that comes out at 477 VA angle 31.89 degrees And if I convert that, you can do it on your calculators, if you convert that to polar form, you get approximately 405 plus 252 J VA. And what do we get? 252 vars, 405 watts. Yeah? So... They tie in, and if you're unsure, it's worthwhile doing a check in a, in a completely different way to make sure that everything works. The other check i done is we said right up front, Danny helped me with that, that these two voltages add up to that one. So the other check that I could do is prove that if I want to, I can do, but I've got to use the full complex quantities for the voltages. So a check on the voltages is we had 135 angle 33.11 for VR. That converts to 113 plus 73.7 J. VL was 84 angle 123.11 degrees which converts to 
minus 45 plus 70.4 J. Add those up. We add up the real parts and the imaginary parts. I get 68 plus 144.1 J. And if I then convert that back to polar, that came out at approximately 159 volts, angle 65 degrees. That's actually 64.7 on my calculator, but there's various round and errors in the conversions. So we proved there, proof, proof voltages by Kirchhoff voltage law, that bit. Anyone got any questions? No? That's on the top there with, um, with the MSC. Is that 15? Where's that? This? Under there. this? Yeah. That's 159. Sorry, Matt. Right. Yeah. It's improved. Yeah. 159. You were given that in the question, wouldn't you? That's on the circuit, yeah? yeah. All right.